Olecranon fractures are a common elbow injury. They are an extensor mechanism injury. Uh, you should distinguish them somewhat from uh, other proximal ulna fractures that you may see in some complex elbow injuries. Some basic surgical anatomy. Uh, be aware of the sigmoid notch of the ulna shown by this dark, uh, I'm sorry, the large blue arrow, as well as the uh, uh, coronoid process. Okay. Um, when you uh, place K wires for, ten, uh, for like an AO tension banding, those surgeons who like to engage the anterior cortex will place it in this direction. Uh, if you have a very uh, comminuted fracture uh, of the olecranon process, you have to make sure that you don't um, shorten this excessively uh, and narrow that uh, sigmoid fossa when you're compressing and treating a comminuted fracture. So these cases here are maybe somewhat borderline. Some people may call them olecranon fractures. Other, others may call them proximal ulna fractures. But um, uh, they're probably a little bit more proximal ulna okay, than uh, true olecranon process fractures. Uh, you're not going to treat those with a tension band, let's just say. Certainly one of them has a coronoid fracture as well. Uh, whereas this fracture here is a bit more like a olecranon fracture. Um, so the factors responsible for elbow stability, uh, like we talked about in the elbow instability and dislocation lecture, are um, uh, the medial collateral ligaments and, and the radial head preventing valgus instability, and the lateral collateral ligaments preventing uh, varus instability. Uh, you also have the coronoid process and the sigmoid fossa of the olecranon. So uh, the idea of your treatment is it's an articular fracture. You want to restore uh, the congruency of the articular surface. You want to restore and preserve elbow uh, extensor mechanism uh, and thereby restore your elbow motion, prevent stiffness, and hopefully avoid complications, which do happen. Uh, you can treat these non-operatively in minimally displaced fractures or in uh, more displaced fractures, two millimeters or more operative treatment, which is uh, usually open reduction internal fixation, but uh, in a select small group of patients, it could be excision. If you have a, like a small olecranon process fracture in an osteoporotic patient, uh, potentially you can excise the small fragment and do a triceps repair, similar to what you might do maybe with a comminuted inferior pole patella fracture, let's just say. Uh, but you don't, you don't really end up doing it that often. Um, ORIF with uh, tension band wires uh, and, and pins or um, screws or with a plate are the two major choices. Uh, there are also, um, you know, IM devices like intramedullary nail type devices, but they're fairly uh, uh, infrequently used. Um, so the indications for surgery are disruption of the extensor mechanism. So with displaced fracture, typically that patient cannot extend the elbow, right? Or articular incongruity that you need to restore. Um, so just to get this out of the way, again, if you have a small olecranon fracture in an elderly osteoporotic patient that you don't think you can gain good control of, uh, and I would say these days a fragment that big probably uh, would be bigger than what you would excise because uh, with, with uh, locked plates, if you do a locked plate with suture augmentation, I think a fracture that was, you know, presumably, you know, this big probably is not going to get excised anymore. But maybe a small fracture that's like that big maybe you would. Um, but excision is appropriate for, again, osteoporotic elderly patients, uh, uh, and you sort of do a uh, triceps uh, repair like this. Make sure that if you are going to do it, you sort of attach it up here to uh, prevent the, uh, uh, if you attach it uh, posteriorly like this, then you have this gap and the distal humerus can actually, you know, fall into this gap here. So um, you want to uh, evaluate uh, when you operate on these the um, uh, comminution of the dorsal cortex. All right. So if it's not comminuted, oftentimes a, a true olecranon fracture can be treated with a tension band construct as uh, like an AO construct. Uh, and if it's comminuted, sometimes uh, plate fixation may be better uh, better for that. Uh, so you certainly want to um, look at the fracture line. If it's a true transverse fracture, like something like this that comes down, uh, that's good for tension banding. Where if it's um, you know more oblique, 
maybe like this, uh, then um, it could be something more complex like this fracture. It could be something more for a plate. These usually are done supine with the arm across the chest, although you can go lateral uh, and prone as well. Um, there are options. Um, uh, you're gonna, you, uh, you can use a tourniquet to control bleeding, posterior approach, pretty much go right down the middle uh, posteriorly. Uh, and as I mentioned, tension band wiring for a lot of these transverse, non-comminuted, simple fractures works well. Here's a nice example of that. Uh, K-wires, figure of eight tension band, um, and uh, compression. Uh, some uh, like to go perpendicular to the fracture and place the pins this uh, this way. Other, you know, like this. Others uh, like to come at a bit of an angle to catch that cortex. You're not perfectly perpendicular, but the pins are less likely to uh, to catch something. Whereas you go intramedullary, they kind of don't really catch anything on the other side. Uh, keep in mind that the proximal ulna is not perfectly straight. It has a little bit of a bow to it. Okay, and um, if you put intramedullary screws, you have to be aware of that. Okay, uh, it's not a perfectly straight line. Here's an example of uh, tension band wiring, and keep in mind when you when you do these, um, there are the complications we typically run into are the the pins backing out later on, or if you put a plate on, the plate being prominent. If you think about it, if you're sitting at your desk right now and you're leaning your elbows on your desk, well, imagine you were leaning on a plate on the back of your elbow, not comfortable, or these wires bent back. So uh, trying to get these nicely buried uh, as deep as possible will hopefully avoid that, but uh, even then it can be a problem. Um, intramedullary screws are a potential option. They should probably be reinforced with some type of other fixation like a wire. Uh, and this is what I was talking about. Beware of the bow of the proximal ulna. I don't think it's shown quite that perfectly here. Um, but uh, you know, intramedullary devices like a long screw, uh, and they're long. Usually when you put these in to, to kind of really get them to fix, you have to be like 80, 90 millimeters, like a, like a 6.5 screw. And here's an uh, example of that here, where you can see um, that uh, because of the uh, bow, when you fix these, you can potentially get gapping on one side. So um, figure of eight wires um, are sort of the standard uh, treatment for this. Here's a case example, relatively transverse uh, electronon fracture treated with an AO tension bending technique, and this can, this can do very well. Uh, if you have a more common nude fracture, um, you can do uh, plate fixation. This is an older slide, so I would act. I would add to here, um, you know, locking plates. And uh, this is something that you're seeing used a lot more. And these can be you know, 3.5 locked plates. Uh, they can be 3.5 and 2.7, um, but uh, something along those lines can, can work for a lot of these. Um, if you have shaft extension, clearly you're going to have to think about either a long plate, um, ideally, or if you have to, an orthogonal plate to fix that. Um, you know, with regards to the plate location, there's no significant difference between the uh, posterior or lateral placement. Uh, there are less problems if you place the plate laterally, right? So shown over here, uh, if you uh, can place it under muscle cover here, it's, you know, you, that person is resting on the elbow, they're not resting on the plate anymore, as opposed to this here, they're resting right on the plate, okay? So if you if you can do it, and you do that really for these fractures that extend further down, uh, you, it's not ideal for the standard electron fracture, but for the more proximal ulna fracture, a laterally positioned plate can work. Okay, here's some example of uh, indirect reduction methods used for treatment of a comminuted electronon fracture. Uh, here's a proximal ulna, uh, coronoid process as well, treated with uh, uh, plate and screw fixation engaging the uh, coronoid fracture. Here's a comminuted uh, electronon fracture, proximal ulna extending into the shaft, uh, shown with that same uh, post-op x-ray shown before. Uh, these typically will heal okay. The biggest problem really is the hardware, right? Causing discomfort later on. Um, so let's get right into that. So hardware systems, I'm sorry, hardware uh, uh, symptoms are fairly common. 
uh, dorsal plates are a problem, tension band wires are a problem, um, uh, and even uh, ulnar nerve problems are not uh, uh, completely uh, avoided when you when you're working as close to it as you are, uh, because screws can potentially long screws coming from the lateral side possibly can irritate the uh, um, the ulnar nerve if you're not careful. Um, tension band wires here you can see the uh, the um, wire may not have been uh, placed deep to the triceps it's intramedullary so this thing really backed out quite a bit unfortunately and that's the, one of the problems you can see with these all right so I'm going to stop there and uh, the next set of slide we'll go through the uh, radial head fractures thanks <laughs>